You know, there are many unique aspects to the George Floyd murder trial, but perhaps one of the most unique is that I don't know if I've ever seen, like before the trial takes place, in the city where it's taking place, part of that city has been named after the victim in the case. Well, that's what you have in Minneapolis. You have a Floyd Square, which now exists. And Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter was there and has more for us tonight. In the wake of George Floyd's death, violence spread across Minneapolis. It was just chaos. There was really no rhyme or reason. Near the site of Floyd's deadly encounter with police, city barricades went up. Residents mobilized to defend themselves. It was just a spontaneous reaction to protect people and the property surrounding our neighborhood. Throughout 2020, mourners flocked to the intersection of 38th Street and Chicago Avenue, transforming the site of Floyd's death into hallowed ground. Months later, barricades still surround the intersection, restricting traffic and suspending bus service. Community members still watch over the area, now known as George Floyd Square. And what you're seeing right now in the square is you're seeing community agency. Not everyone sees it that way. To some, George Floyd Square is a model of mutual aid. To others, it's a blighted area that exemplifies failed city leadership. This city is grieving. This community is grieving. And we got a failed council, and we have a very weak mayor. Now, as the trial of former officer Derek Chauvin approaches, debate rages over what should happen next to 38th in Chicago. There are many sides to, to the conversation, many sides to the debate, ranging from you know, reopen it and get traffic moving and get businesses reopened to some sort of permanent closure. Every single business in this intersection has been wanting the barricades removed since they were placed. That's Mahmoud Abumayale, co-owner of Cut Foods. His employee placed the call that summoned police to the scene on May 25th. You know, police, People have been, you know, physically assaulted, uh, killed, shot at, and the police just can't do anything about it because People don't want them around. Minneapolis police spokesman John Elder said officers have not abandoned the area. But as for the barricades, that is a city council decision. Under the community's watch, the bus shelters offer books and clothing. An abandoned gas station hosts meetings in a pop up medical clinic. A memorial continues to grow from the spot where Floyd drew his last breaths. A sculpture at the intersection stands in solidarity with black lives. People seem to think that this is a protest or some type of lawless zone. This is neither. Akeem Cubby is a member of Agape, a volunteer patrol force. This is a statement that we're making to the world that if people truly come together for a righteous cause, we can make a change. The big question is, is how will it open up? Toussaint Morrison is one of many devoting time to the community. The question is, is what is going to be the best move for black people in that neighborhood? What is going to be the best move for black people overall in the city of Minneapolis? Discussions ramped up over the summer when former Mayor Betsy Hodges postponed plans to remove the barricades amid community objections. Neighborhood leaders put forth a resolution with 24 demands to make up for what they see as years of disinvestment. Among the demands, they want the barricades to stay put until all four former officers accused in Floyd's death stand trial, something that's not expected to happen until the end of summer 2021. For me, it's a real deep concern that we don't incite more civil unrest. That City Council Vice President Andrea Jenkins describing why the barriers will likely stay for the foreseeable future. The people who are holding down George Floyd Square are really seeking to address this broader issue of justice. And I'm just not sure if Minneapolis is equipped to account for all of the ills of our entire society. Again, our thanks to Chanley Painter for putting all that together and uh, our great team here at Court TV. Um, George Floyd Square, 
That's, I mean, this is in Minneapolis where the trial is going to, going to be, in that same city, that same town. Um, extremely different and unique situation. Let's bring back in our think tank and let's, let's, let's understand what's happening in Minneapolis, which is a big part of Hennepin County. Um, this is where the prospective jurors are going to come from. So ultimately, uh, Noah, let's start with you. You've got this part of town, a whole section of town, you know, George Floyd Square. I'm sure everybody knows about it. Um, how difficult is that plus everything else going to be in trying to find those 12 people who will make the decision? I think it's almost going to be impossible to find 12 um, impartial jurors, especially with you know, the, the kind of the rules of engagement now, which are, um, you know, people get harassed for doing their job. And, and I'm worried for the jury and their safety, whatever their decision, you know, the, a jury should be allowed. I mean, it's required that they should find their verdict based on the law and the evidence that's presented to them. And I, I'm very concerned for their safety for their ability to do their job because you know they may get threatened their houses may get vandalized you know th their their safety's in danger if you ask me i, I don't know that that's uh, fair to say uh and, and no i i hear you uh but first of all there's not even been a jury set uh, right now so uh, and nobody's received any death threats or any concerns for their own uh, physical well-being so uh, while I hear uh, the concern, I, I think it's a little premature at this point. You know, courts have dealt with this uh, throughout uh, American history. You know, most recently uh, in uh, our history, I would say maybe the OJ trial, right? Uh, there was a jury there that certainly had to deal with public concern and, and outcries, but the courts were able to deal with it. Of course, they sequestered those jurors. Uh, and maybe that's something what they will do here. Uh, but I don't think it's fair to uh, uh, put uh, some type of uh, unheard and, and unmentioned threat uh, that is yet to have been made uh, against the jurors. Well, DeWitt, back you know, in OJ time, we didn't have protesters going to mayor's houses, senators' houses, House of Representatives' houses, police chiefs' houses. We didn't have, you know... Um, you know, in essence, violence against public officials for being public officials. And I think that's the difference now. There, there's a difference now than there was mm -hmm. during OJ. We had a horrible riot I, after the fact, but we didn't have people being attacked for doing their job. I mean, I think I, that, I don't believe that's you know, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't believe that's true. Uh, I don't and, believe that's true. Look, I mean, public yeah, officials I, have had those concerns. Sorry, Eklund, but public officials, if you allow me just a minute, and I'll, I'll get out of your way here, Eklund. I know you want to go. Good. Um, um, <laughs> public officials have dealt with these concerns for many, many years. In California, look, in San Francisco, a um, place where I used to live, you know, how do we think Dianne Feinstein ended up becoming uh, the mayor, right? It's because George Moscone and the mayor uh, um, and uh, Harvey Milk uh, were assassinated there uh, by somebody who had a different political uh, ideology. So, look, those things uh, we're not stranger to, per se. I'm not saying that they happen all the time, but it's not something that I think is fairly put uh, on the public right now, uh, as there hasn't been uh, any death threats to any jurors because there's been no jurors sat in this case. Well, I do hear your concern, and I appreciate that. I think it's just a little premature at this time. Yeah, and I think that, you know, um, nobody planned to make history. Um, as Vinny said, this is the most pivotal trial of the century. And unfortunately, it happened at Hennepin County, and it happened with George Floyd. So they're going to have to bear the grunt of it. That's just what happens, you know, when you have you know, film like that, when you have footage like that, when you have, you know, when we have rampant racism, we're talking about Black Lives Matter, white supremacy, Proud Boys. There are all these issues that kind of surrounded George Floyd. You have to expect this to happen. So I do believe, um, but I, 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 I agree with DeWitt in that it is premature to say there hasn't been any violence towards jurors because we don't have any jurors. Um, and I do believe like we have things in place, you know, jurors can be sequestered, they, you know, identities can be, you know, identity, identities can be definitely, you know, not 
in public. So there are things that we can do. But um, to say that there's going to be, um, to say that the jurors are going to be hurt or anything like that, it is premature because we haven't had any. We how, how about we this aspect of it? Happen. Let me ask you this. Um, say you've got prospective jurors who have visited George Floyd Square, who have spent time at George Floyd Square and have gone there, um, you know, in, in, in some way feeling the need to be there. Can someone like that sit on this jury? Yes, they're, I mean, they're, I mean, they're citizens of Hennepin County. Of course you're going to pass by George Floyd. It's the biggest trial of the century to not go, like to say that, um, to, to put everybody that even visited that the George Floyd Square can't be on the jury. I think that that's, that, that's too much. That's too much. We're not ready for and, that. And I, I would agree with, with Eklund on that. And I would say, uh, Noah, that I think that that's probably the greater concern is that there's going to be so much bias uh, because this is such a divisive issue. You know, if folks are going to be on one side or the other, very clearly, I think, in this trial, and, and not even with considerations of race, just in consideration of trying to uh, 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 put an, an officer in jail for murder. I think that in and, in and of itself is going to be tough, uh, not even withstanding the backdrop of everything that's happening in this country right now. All right, folks, we got a lot more to get to tonight. We're going to take a look at the next live trial here on Court TV that begins Monday in Wisconsin. Don't go anywhere.